welcome to Naughty Boy Fight Picks, UFC on UFC on Fox 30 uh, or UFC Calgary recap. Um, just finished, usually I do my recap the day after because being in New Zealand the fights usually finish when it's dark and my lighting's no good for recording, um, but today we have the advantage of um, the early fight card. So, I think things wrapped up about 2.30 p.m. New Zealand time, it's now just going on 4 o'clock. So, um, not a best day for me with the picks. Uh, how do we do? I went down just under, what is it? Oh, I just saw last week's and I was like, fuck, that looks good. But where is this week's? I think I went down just under 10 units. Fortunately, um, that was on my track betting. Fortunately, I had two ridiculous parlays come in. I won't bore you with the details of them because one of them was like a seven leg parlay where um, it's all fighter does not win inside the distance and shit like that so real complicated and boring but it came in and then I had another one come in on I think Aldo Poirier, Young Jay Czech and a few others so and that totaled about 12 units so tracked I went down 10 units and that's what really counts I guess um, but overall my money and the account is up just over two units. So, uh, can't be too disappointed there. Um, I guess, and the card was awesome. So, really enjoyed the card and fucking Jose Aldo didn't lose. So, if he had lost, I might not be doing this video now because I wouldn't be in the mood. But, he got that win and that was spectacular. Um, real fun card. I'll quickly go over my bets. Um, shout out to... Rockstar Z again for the the tips. One came in, one didn't, and like I said in the last video, that's my responsibility because he tipped me. I went and researched the fights and then made my decisions. But Hernandez came in. Um, I'll get into uh, talking about that fight when I go through the whole car. But he came in for a few units, so I'm just trying to find the results here. Um, and. Fuck, I can't do two things at once, I'm sorry. Uh, then my next play, well, fucking uh, Andy Gulov. So, oh yeah, I'll get into it when I go for the car, but Andy Gulov obviously didn't come in, and then Mateus Nicolau didn't come in either. Um, my parlays, Poirier and Jan Jacek came in. Dewaru came in, but Nicolau didn't come in on that other one. Um, and then I missed another parlay because of Andy Gulov. My prop bet on Jan Jacek to win by decision came in. And my other prop on Andy Gulov um, to win by KO, TKO or sub didn't come in, obviously, because he put on a very fucking poor performance. Um... Where are we? Just finding these results, sorry, so I can go through the card. Um, you may have seen me talk about how terrible my memory is, and so that will be um, exhibited here because I just watched it and there will be things that I fucking forget. Once again, not prepared, I should have brought this up earlier. I got a new segment to do at the end of this too, so I figured my um, the recaps don't get as much play so I figured I will jazz it up a bit with a new segment and we'll see how that goes um, yeah where are we okay so first fight of the night was um oh fuck I haven't even got the right thing up sorry where are we oh, now my laptop's being shot Bear with me. Um, really should have done this beforehand. Um, nothing wrong with a bit of dead air though. Eh? When I used to do a podcast with my friend Dominic, um, we always had a guest. And 
sometimes it got super awkward and there'd be dead air. I'd be like looking at him for something to say and he'd be doing vice versa. It was the fucking worst. Here we are. We got some results up, I believe. Okay, so the first fight, Alvaro Herrera versus Devin Powell. This came out, uh, both guys came out uh, with what looked like awful striking technique. And I was like, fuck, this is going to go forever and it's going to be terrible. And then all of a sudden, Devin Powell decides he has a beautiful body kick, lands it twice and gets rid of Herrera. Um, yeah, just not high level stuff, but I was glad it was over quickly. Oh, actually, it looked like it was going to get kind of entertaining. So could have been all right. Never mind, though. Um, next fight up, Nina Ansaroff winning a unanimous decision over Random Marcos. Whoever at ATT says Ansaroff is the best 115 pound fighter in that gym is fucking tripping balls. But, uh, yeah, she got a close decision. Well, it was unanimous, but reasonably close fight over Random Marcos, and that was um, not much to talk about there. Next fight up. Dustin Ortiz uh, gets the KO win over Mateus Nicolau. Um, I thought Nicolau came out and looked good. He... It was tight, but I thought... It looked like Ortiz was having trouble figuring him out on the feet. And um, Nicolau, I was thinking, was probably going to cruise to a pretty easy decision. Um, and then, out of nowhere, Ortiz lands a head kick. Um... I think if you ran that fight back, I think quite possibly Nicolau will get a win. I think he is a more talented fighter, but uh, not taking anything away from Ortiz, who now all of a sudden is on a streak of KOs, two of them. Um, and good for him, I guess. Uh, but yeah, not for me, because I missed out on that bit. But looking forward to Nicolau's young. He'll be back, and I think he's an exciting fighter. Um, much more interested in where he goes than where Ortiz goes in that division. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah. Just in reference to my pettiness, uh, I don't like Dustin Ortiz. The same reason I don't like Adam Lobov or John McDessie, and it's because they have real short legs and long bodies, which I should add, I think I'm quite a short-legged human, so I hate them because I hate myself. Uh, but yeah, just I like to reference my pettiness so you guys know how indeed petty I am. Next fight up, Alexis Davis versus Caitlin Chukagian. Uh, Chukagian getting the decision there, unanimous decision. Um, I would have given that to Davis, I think. Close, but man, I would gladly... Never watched Chuck Hagen again. To people that did tape on her, I feel sorry for you. Um, even, oh, fuck. If, like, she's in a spot that I want to bet, I don't know if I could bring myself to watch the tape because she fucking sucks to watch fight. What is she? She's 10 and 1. Um, so, fuck, we're going to have to see her fight again, I guess, but... I could def I would leave it rather than take it. Um, and hard luck for Alexis Davis fighting at home. The veteran, I think she pressed the fight. Uh, landed what looked like more powerful strikes. So hard luck to her. Next fight up was a bit of a sleeper. John McDessie winning a unanimous decision over Ross Pearson. A uh, real fun fight, striking battle. Um, McDessie using speed and precision to win, but Pearson initially was uh, in the fight, and I think that was due to the variety of strikes he threw. So he has real good variety in his striking, and he used it to good effect, um, but eventually McDessie's pace and precision like slowly kind of turned the tide of the fight well I think he had the edge from the beginning but it got more dramatic towards the end obviously as you saw and fuck Pearson's got a chin man his head is like a cinder block he's just eating big big shots and then at the end when he was all cut up and like his head was snapping back and his mouth was open it looked fucking horrible and McDessie um gestured to the ref it looked like he didn't want to hit him anymore, which was um, 
interesting, I guess. But yeah, real fun fight. And that's one of those fights you don't mind seeing go to decision because those guys left it all in there. Uh, next fight up, uh, another fucking bum out for me. Iwan Kutalaba defeating Antigolov KO in the first round. Uh, I had obviously placed a bet on Antigolov here. And he came out and did what everyone knew he was going to do. Got the takedown. And I was at that point feeling pretty fucking happy about things. And I thought that play was going to cash. Um, somewhere in there... So I think a, a few things happened in this fight. Uh, one was... Antigolov was getting the takedown, but he couldn't secure the position. Obviously, Kudalaba is really strong and powerful uh, and kept uh, kept getting back up. And then when he'd get up, he was landing heavy strikes in the clinch. So I think a combination of how hard Antigolov was having to work for position and I think those strikes uh, just took him completely out of the fight. So I think he was a bit gassed, but... If you've um, sparred or been in a fight, uh, you, you'll know nothing takes the fight out of you, like getting hit really hard. Uh, so I, I suspect, because you've seen Antigolov, if you've watched his uh, older fights, you've seen him go a few rounds and keep up a pace, particularly for light heavyweight, um, which I expected him to be able to do today. But Kudalaba landed those big shots, and I think that is ultimately what took him out of the fight. Like he just stopped fighting, and Kudalaba got the finish. So good performance by him. He's a pretty uh, exciting guy, and I guess that's what kind of sucks even more about this is when you bet on the most boring outcome possible, and it doesn't come in. So it would have been way more satisfying to put a um, play on the more interesting, exciting fighter Kudalaba and cash it, but. Uh, I think he's a good product for the UFC, Kudalaba. He's got personality, um, and he's got some skills. There's obviously some holes in his game, but future matchups for him. There's a few guys kind of coming up around that level now, like Reyes, uh, Rakic. Who else? There's a couple. Uh, so there's some interesting matchups for Kudalaba. Uh, and he could be a good uh, product for the UFC, I think. But I don't know. He, I guess he's still young, so perhaps he could get to that um, upper echelon. We shall see. Next fight up, Cajun Johnson uh, losing by submission to Islam Makachev. Um, watched this and then was real pissed. I didn't put a play on Makachev to get the sub. Um, but I didn't really pay much close attention to this fight. I just kind of saw the betting line and was like, didn't even think of that. Uh, Cajun Johnson, terrible game plan. Don't know what the fuck he was doing, but it was like a more athletic version of Chuck Kagan and pretty glad that that got done in the first round. And uh, Makachev could be, I won't say, not a contender just yet but he should be looking at some top 15 fights from here on out you would imagine next up in featherweight uh, Hakeem Duwaru winning a unanimous decision over Austin Arnett real good performance I thought I would imagine some people not be super happy with his performance but I mean coming off his debut and losing that way you could forgive him for being slightly cautious and he came out and did what he had to do and then he really did put it on Arnett in the final round um, and yeah basically just put a clinic on him out striking him in a huge way uh, beautiful variety of strikes that real um, Muay Thai thing of finishing up punching combos with the low kick he made real good use of that um, and it would have been nice to see him finish that fight, but nonetheless, a great performance, a real wide disparity there, and he exploited it and got the win over Arnett. Next fight up, Jordan Mean winning a unanimous decision over Alex Morono. 
uh, this fight fucking sucked I thought uh, Morono coming out and it's incredible when you see uh, striking technique that poor in the UFC and on the the main fight of the prelims nonetheless uh, if someone could have CGI'd some water in the octagon it would have looked like Morono was trying to swim and then Mean's response to that was to swing wildly back which uh, I don't know you kind of you were seeing like real nice crisp striking from Mean in the past and you would expect a veteran of that many fights to stay composed and start throwing down the pipe when a guy was swinging so recklessly like that but he didn't but eventually he did figure it out and start getting the takedowns and got a pretty comfortable decision I thought but yeah that fight was horrible uh, next up we had uh, my play that came in so at this point I was just gutted I thought um, when things start going wrong you just kind of resign to the fact you're having a bad day and I was just kind of given up on my bet on all oh, really hoping Hernandez would get it to kind of save my day somewhat but and he did but to begin with I was fucking shook and I think in the first round you saw Hernandez um corner after the first round saying to him like telling him to slow down because I really thought he was going to gas himself but it turns out he can put a pace on and he did put a pace on OAM and just basically did that for three rounds and he t kept turning it up and OAM didn't really have answers for the grappling or the striking so Hernandez looked better I expected Hernandez to win this fight standing uh, and was surprised he kept going for the grappling but it was working but yeah I was fucking petrified that he was going to gas out and lose that fight so he's a real another real exciting guy at lightweight um, and very young so he excited to see what's next for him next up woman's straw weight Joanna uh, went in a unanimous decision against Tisha seemed like a case of pretty poor game planning uh, by Tisha's team um, going for the clinch so often and it was seen in the past that Joanna's jo clinch is really good uh, and even when Tisha had her against the cage Joanna was making space landing knees uh, and I think uh, scoring in those positions where Tisha wasn't doing fuck all with them and then whenever they were separated obviously Joanna um, getting off on the striking there was that spot at the end of the second round where Tisha did what she should have been doing and got inside and it looked like she landed a good shot on you and I couldn't tell if she was hurt or not but it definitely got her attention um, and yeah Tisha just kind of abandoned that in the third round well, throughout the fight I think DC kept commentating and saying that um, Tisha was obviously not getting really hurt by Joanna's strikes because she's not known for her power and ought to come in and try and brawl in the pocket but she just wasn't able to and yeah in regards to this so a dominant win for Joanna but uh, not a win that I think screams put her right back at the top and in a title fight uh, so but I mean maybe what happens next Andrade and Rose fight and maybe if an Andrade wins uh, Joanna can get the shot but I think if Rose wins it could she may need another fight or two and I saw um, yeah I saw, saw someone saying that it would be good to see her go up to 125 get the belt and then call for the shot at 115 which makes heaps of sense to me but uh, apparently Joanna's not interested in that whatsoever next fight up uh, the highlight for me I think Jose Aldo beating Jeremy Stevens by KO in the first round or TKO sorry uh, in the first round um, I was pretty surprised initially I expected Jose 
to come out and try and use movement, but he was really flat footed and I was like, he's going to get knocked the fuck out. And Stevens appeared to hurt him early on. Um, and yeah, it looked bad and I was not ready to see Jose Aldo get knocked out by Jeremy Stevens. A few things in the lead up to this fight, I thought, I know you got to talk yourself into the fight and speak confidently, but I don't really like how Stevens spoke about Aldo and, um, obviously I'm super invested in Aldo, huge fan, uh, so I would side with him any day, so, um... It was great to see Aldo answer the call to fucking box in the pocket with, with Stevens, which I think is what um, Stevens would have wanted if you were to ask prior to the fight uh, how they would prefer Aldo to fight. It would have been to stand flat-footed in the pocket and exchange in boxing range. And Aldo answered the call and fucking landed that sublime body shot. It's funny, earlier on, I think in the... The Waru fight, I was going to tweet the, I think, the best looking strike or my favorite um, strike is the rip to the body because the Waru was throwing that a few times and then I was like, oh no, I'll just talk about it in the recap instead of tweeting it and then, yeah, and then Aldo lands that. See on the slow motion replay, like it land, see it register in um, like Steven's head and then like there's that gap in time and then the pain hits the feeling so if you've been hit in the body I, mean, I was gonna say like that but fuck you know who's been ripped to the body by Jose Aldo uh, lots of people but not us um, yeah you'll know that that feeling is fucking awful so Aldo goes in for the kill Stevens turtles I was I intended to go back and watch the finish a few more times before I did this recap but I haven't but what I will say is I wasn't mad at the stoppage I saw a lot of people who are not happy with the stoppage I think Stevens was done uh, Aldo was landing strikes on the ground you could easily make an argument that he wasn't intelligently defending himself so stoppage is fine by me um, and Aldo, well, it's hard to say he's back because where does he go from here? Like, matching up Jose Aldo now is super difficult because I saw lots of people saying him versus Ortega, which I don't hate, but I don't know. And then if, Ortega, if Holloway's all good to fight this year and him and Ortega goes ahead then you can't see Aldo getting a rematch versus Holloway, although that appears to be what his heart desires. Um, I just see a third fight with Holloway probably going even worse for Aldo. If Ortega wins, then perhaps he has a case. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think Jose reaches the top again. Uh, he looked really good. To, well... Yeah, he doesn't look like the same guy. And, yeah, I was going to speak to the, about the Joanna fight. So, Jose and Joanna, I think, are both similar in that while they were champion and defending their belt multiple times, they have this aura. And then after losses, they come back and there's something different, right? You, um, yeah, I don't know if either of those those two get their belts back it's just hard to picture and it doesn't happen often in the sport so uh, yeah hard road here for Aldo I think I would like to see him how should they match him up yeah I don't really have any answers in regards to that and as far as Jeremy Stevens goes most losses in UFC history um, you could take that to the bank and yeah that's probably his title hopes dash too i don't know how old he is i don't think he's too old but yeah at that division he's kind of old especially with the what's he had 40 something fights so yeah that's that main event uh poirier getting the second round ko of eddie alvarez uh 
first round was interesting. Oh, actually, the whole fight was interesting, obviously. Um, I think, yeah, this fight delivered, and despite what happened at the end, I know that controversy kind of enhances things, I think. Um, first round was real close, I thought, both guys being quite... Uh, careful is not the right word, but um, both measuring each other, and I really liked how Dustin kept showing Eddie the left hand because uh, apparently a left cross is Eddie Alvarez kryptonite, and many times as yeah, Poirier's straight left is really nice, and um, he'd touch him with it lots of times, and I, I, that's a real good part of Poirier's game how it changes power. So quite a few times he'd just touch with it and then he was like waving it and just letting Eddie know that it was there, uh, which was real good tactically, I thought. Uh, Eddie Alvarez doing his usual thing, landed that real nice spinning back fist in the first round. Um, and yeah, it looked really close and I had no idea which way the fight was going. Why is the light change when I put my arms up? Fucking bizarre. Um, I had no idea which way it was going to go at that point. Come out second round, Eddie wisely, I think, employs his wrestling, and Dustin jumps at first guillotine, and it looked really tight, but he didn't have his legs in the right position from what my limited knowledge of jiu-jitsu tells me. Uh, but it did look tight. Eddie escaped, get back to the feet. Uh, Eddie shoots again. And Dustin jumps guillotine again. And I was just like, at that point, I was like, fuck, he's lost the fight. Because how many times have you seen seen it in MMA when a guy repeatedly jumps guillotine and then they end up losing um, through doing that? Uh, it's bizarre that guys still do it just when percentage-wise it seems like the worst possible thing to do in a fight. Uh Eddie gets Dustin mounted in that weird kind of sitting position and he's looking at his corner for instructions and they tell him to throw an elbow. Now, I saw everyone on Twitter saying that his corner told him to throw a 12 to 6. I think, like, so the motion his coach did did look like a 12 to 6, but I think they were instructing him to throw that. You know that uh, the elbow Muay Thai fighters throw in the clinch when they're standing and it's kind of like in so it's like more of a diagonal motion with a slight angle on it I think they were trying to tell him to throw that and he just threw a straight up um, 12 to 6 elbow with like on fucking Dustin's shoulder too so it wasn't going to do fuck all um, Goddard who I don't particularly like and uh, I see a lot of other people don't as well I think I talked about him last week um, steps in separates the fighters and then puts them back standing so so many ways you could look at this uh, it's, and from both ways too so Eddie should have thrown the 12 to 6 he's a veteran he should know better uh, whether you want to blame his corner or him, whatever. I don't think Eddie Alvarez is a dirty fighter, which I think there's going to be a lot of discussion about now, given what happened in the last fight and this fight, and now the stuff they're saying about him putting his finger in uh, Poirier's ear. But I don't think he's a dirty fighter. Um, yeah, so he, he should have thrown the elbow... But I don't think Goddard should have stood them. I think he should have just verbally warned him, maybe interrupted at most, and given the warning, and then let them go back at back at it in the position they were in. I think in the post fight, Poirier said that he said to Goddard, "I'm sweet, I'm not hurt," and he wanted the fight to continue. So, yeah, hard luck to Eddie, I guess, but he did do some dumb shit and. Uh, so they got stood back up and, you know, you, lots of people are going to say, oh, that lost Eddie the fight, but ultimately you're in a fight. There's, there is variables, one being the referee and the decisions he makes. And so they got stood back up and then 
Eddie got cleaned up on the feet. So I think largely, despite all of that, he lost the fight fair and square. I mean, he, yeah, he was in a good position. He perhaps could have got a finish from there. I don't know. But you just kind of have to roll with what happens in there. And yeah, he got knocked out. So uh, seems to be a pretty large consensus on what should happen with Dustin. People are calling for Dustin versus Ferguson, which I love, and putting that as the co-main for Habib versus McGregor. And fuck, I, I, I imagine if you're watching this, you're as excited as I am for that possibility. That'd be so fucking good. Um, yeah, and I guess if if Tony's not ready, I'd like to see them throw Kevin Lee in there. But yeah, fun stuff regardless. As for Eddie, uh, his path back to a title shot looks really difficult now, just given how kind of clusterfucked the top of that division is. So, I mean, he has done it all. He's been champion every every fucking uh, organization he's been with. Uh, I wouldn't... I guess it would depend on his negotiations. Like, I imagine the competitor he is, he'll want to stay in UFC, but I wouldn't be surprised if UFC don't value him that much anymore. There's so much talent in that division, so I don't know how his contract negotiations are going to go, and we may see him in Bellator or something, earning more money, and... How would he do there? Well, they got Chandler... Yeah, so he'd be pretty good over there. He could definitely... He'd probably walk straight into a title shot in Bellator. So, um, love Eddie Alvarez. And just the signature fucking Eddie Alvarez shit too before he got finished is you can't fucking knock him out um, clean anyway. And him, that's, that's such a familiar picture. Him, bloody and rocked against the cage and then winging fucking hooks in response to a vicious onslaught from Poirier. That was some vintage um, Alvarez shit, except it was just missing the comeback. And yeah, he lands one of those hooks and the fight can be back on again, you know? Uh, I guess that's why people love to watch him. And so yeah, overall, real fun card. Top heavy, which was good. There's some bullshit in the middle. Um, but the two main fights really delivered. Uh, I would say, despite a dominant performance, the Joanna fight was a little... Disappointing isn't the right word, but it just didn't... It didn't you didn't come away from that fight thinking, oh, fuck, Joanna's, like, back on her bullshit. I mean, like, she stayed on her bullshit, but you know what I mean. Uh, not that exciting. So good fun. Um, let's go back to my notes. What have we got here? Uh, so uh, my friend, I haven't seen anything official, but my friend sent me this picture of uh, what they're doing for, is it UFC 230? And I think it's Costa versus Yoel, which um, I'm sure one party said it's not. They haven't signed or it's not confirmed, but Costa versus Yoel. Adesanya versus Brunson, Branch versus Jacare, and Weidman versus Rockhold, which is fucking good fun. Um, I nearly put the Weidman Rockhold fight in the don't care category, but coupled with all those other fights, it's really fun. Um, Costa versus Yoel after Costa's last fight. Um, I was calling for that. That's a fight I'd really like to see. Although I would prefer to see Yoel go up to 205, I think. He could nearly waltz straight into the title picture at 205 and probably have some good results too. Uh, I favor him over Costa. Uh, Brunson going after Israel. I was thinking about it and I was like, fuck, that doesn't seem very smart because I think that's a fight he loses. But you got to kind of think... Um, Brunson is kind of malingering around that, that um, you know, the rough end of the top 10 in that division, and that's a fight that would bring him some attention, and probably, but yeah, I just think he loses it, so, you know, what's he got, he's, 
striking technique not that great he is explosive and powerful but and that would help with the takedowns but I still like Israel's going to have better takedown defense than we saw last time you like you know he's working on that and constantly improving it and getting better and better and plus the confidence of getting through these tough um, tests where people think he's going to get wrestle fucked and he doesn't um yeah, I just think he'll be out of stuff Brunson's shots and then on the feet. What the fuck's Brunson got for him? Nothing, man. Like Brunson's striking technique isn't that great. He does have power, but you gotta hit the dude to to um to land that power and I don't think he gets a shot on Israel. So fun nonetheless, Branch versus Jacare, real fun. I really like David Branch. Um not sure who I favour in that without thinking of it. Further, um, during the week, uh, lots of people and lots of discussion about the interim belts with um, the prospect of Colby getting stripped, which sucks. Like, I wanted to see that fight. I want to see him versus Woodley. I will take Till versus Woodley as well. That's, let's say, an exciting fight that has potential to be really boring. Um... So, I'll get into that after, but, um, yeah, I found it real strange. Everyone's, like, all in uproar. Oh, this devalues the belts. and But this is the same people that have constantly been saying that the interim belts are stupid and they don't mean anything. So, which which one is it? Does it... Is it egregious when someone gets stripped uh, unrightfully or do those belts mean fuck all? And I think... Uh, we've known that they don't mean fuck all for ages. I mean, like, it's supposed to guarantee you the shot, but UFC has a schedule, and in this case, Colby, them waiting for Colby wasn't an option. They needed a fight for that card, so... I mean, I'm bummed that fight's not happening. I think that's the fight that needs to happen, but what are you going to do? Scheduling's a bitch, eh? And um, they need a... They have too many, too many events, obviously, and... Not enough uh, good fights to headline pay-per-view cards. So, what's done is done. In regards to the Till Wonder, oh, sorry, Till Woodley matchup. So I think there's real potential for that to for that to be another boring fight. Um, and then you got to imagine what happens to Woodley if he wins another real boring fight. Um, would he be the first? UFC champion to be stripped uh, I, I can't imagine that would happen but fuck you'd have to say they would be super unhappy with him by that point uh, interesting but ho let's hope it's an exciting fight hopefully um, Till presses the action but we shall see uh, it's hard to press the action against a guy with power like Woodley as we've seen um, what else we got here oh so Obviously, Connor's court case was done, and I thought an interesting note about it that I didn't see anyone talk about was so uh, there's protection order on him against like Ray Borg, I think Kiesa, and someone else. Um, and I was thinking about who that affects in a bad way, and it's not the fighters who who are supposed to be protected by the order, right? So. If I think even if Connor wasn't fighting on, so he can't be in a certain radius of these people. Um, so say the UFC wanted to have Connor just in the audience of a fight, which I think they would prefer. At this at this stage, what would you prefer in terms of promotional value, Connor in the audience, or Ray Borg or Michael Chiesa fighting? I think UFC would put Connor every day, right? So if he's at just attending an event, let alone fighting on one, those guys probably won't be able to be there. Um, and that would be the UFC's call that they would make, I imagine. Just speculating here. So I think those orders, um, yeah, just work in, the, in a way that they're not intended to in this case, which was interesting to me. Um, nearly done here. The... The segment I wanted to add, and maybe I'll get some music and some graphics for it in the near future, is called the Don't Care Department. So, uh, as I've alluded to earlier, 
I'm a very petty person and I enjoy reveling in my pettiness so I've made a segment where I can do that and this week's don't care department um, fighters jokingly calling out Brock Lesnar it's happened two weeks in a row never need to see it again I don't need to see it the first time that's fucking got old real fast uh, next up in the don't care department um, Bellator signs Richie Smullen if you've already forgotten who he is or was he was the tough contestant who fought Luis Pena in the tough finale and uh, it was announced during the week that Bellator signed him I don't know what the fuck is going on there like why they have any interest in him and the only thing I can devise is that he he trains at SPG I believe so maybe SPG has some push there or fuck I don't know why you would want to reject from the Ultimate Fighter TV show signed I can't imagine he's on much money surely not and last thing for Don't Care Department is news came out today that Michael Chiesa moves to welterweight um yeah I th he's gonna get steamrolled in that division I believe which will be kind of fun so maybe I do care a little bit ah uh, also, in regards to the new segment, the Don't Care Department, speaking on these things would imply that I do care about them some degree, and I guess that's true, but only in the interest of uh, belittling things I don't like, which I quite enjoy. So, with all that said, um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe, as always. Oh, fuck, I was going to get into some comments, but we've run real long. Um... Perhaps I will address the comments during the week, but I had some real good ones. Fuck it. Yeah. Next video, I'll address those comments. Sorry, because uh, I did promise people I would talk about them on this video, but i got to go do some shit. I want to watch some rugby league. Um, oh, yeah, the Parker fight today. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to watch that later. Maybe we'll talk about that during the week as well. But once again, thank you for tuning in. Enjoy your week. I uh, hope you won money, and... Yeah, I'll be back with picks midweek sometime. Thank you.